guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath and it is time once again for a new installment of Fresh Flavors. Those of you who may just be joining the channel, Fresh Flavors is our uh, Serial at Midnight branded look at the new releases, things that are just hitting shelves, the collector market. In some cases, a lot of this stuff is still in pre-order phase. I have it before the street date, which is very cool. So some of this is gonna be your first look. They're fresh flavors. We're rolling with the cereal theme. See, see what I did there? Uh, let's kick it off with The Quiet Place Part 2. By the way, a lot of horror in this stack. A lot. It's not exclusively horror, but there's a lot of horror. There's a lot of international stuff here, too. A Quiet Place Part 2, just out on the 4K format from Paramount. I'm going to be honest with you guys, have not watched this yet, so it's hard to talk about it, but I want to cover it and talk about how this is out. So A Quiet Place Part 1, I liked, but I was one of those people... It's People love these movies. I mean, look, it's like, it's fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, do, does that mean, do, you, you, guys, you guys tell me, does the Rotten Tomatoes freshness score mean anything to you or do you judge by what you like? I personally find that I like a lot of things that aren't fresh and there are a lot of things that are fresh that I'm like, well, that wasn't for me. So that doesn't necessarily mean uh, what I think it means to some people. I wanna know what you guys think about that. I enjoyed the way A Quiet Place Part 1 ended. I'm not going to spoil it. Um, we're not here to do that. But when it ended, I was like, oh, man, that's the movie that I want to see. Where this movie ended, I would like to see a movie pick up where that one left off. A Quiet Place Part 2. <laughs> Let's lock and load. So I'm excited about watching this. I just haven't really had a chance to sit down and check it out yet. I want to know what you guys think about this. Uh, this does have production diaries by, direct, includes director diaries with John Krasinski. Uh, everybody loves John Krasinski, right? They're like, Jim, oh, Jim, hug you, Jim. From The Office, in case you don't know. Uh, and he and Emily Blunt are like the Hollywood power couple right now. Here's what I like about the Quiet Place movies. By the way, are we watching a franchise in the making? Or are is there going to be like like five years from now, will there be six Quiet Place movies? Is this the new Saw franchise? Um, so they, the thing that I like about these movies is that they are small. And even this, you know, the first one was very small. It was very um, low. Not It's not low budget, but it's for a Hollywood production. It was very modest, right? And because he kept things low, he was able to really have a lot of creative creative control. Still pretty low for a sequel. Still very, you know, keeping the budget well under normal Hollywood blockbuster standards, but he's got enough of a, bu of a budget that he can play with it and, and like bring more to the table. So uh, I don't know, I'm really looking forward to it and I will have a review for you guys soon. But this is not a review video. We'll do reviews later. I've been doing more small bites. You guys have noticed I've been doing like, hey, we'll talk about one thing. I like doing that. So maybe there'll be a future, maybe I'll do a quick pick for uh, Quiet Place Part 2. But this is available right now. It's a 4K Blu-ray combo pack, comes with digital. Uh, you can get it in other formats as well. Let's talk about some pre-orders from Kino Lorber. We have four, whoop, whoop, four Vincent Price movies. Hitting disc from Kino Lorber. These are August releases, so I've got these weeks early to show you guys. Um, now we have to acknowledge it's hard to talk about these. It's hard to talk about these. Um, is that am I holding it? Nope, upside down. It's hard to talk about these movies without talking about the fact that they've had previous releases uh, from uh, Scream Factory. They were in those Vincent Price collections, those nice box sets. Um, I believe they're right up here. Uh, but and here's something else that I see a lot, and I have to address it. I see a lot of people say when something re gets re-released. For instance, Paramount is re-releasing re the Blu-ray set of the Friday the 13th, the first eight Friday the 13th movies. They're re-releasing it with a new cover. And people are like, why are they trying to get us to buy this again? They're probably not. Not everything is for you. And that's something that we as a community sometimes have a hard time with. Like, this might not be for me. These, for instance, there are a lot of people who have come into fandom maybe recently who have just discovered Vincent Price. You got to think, people are coming into this hobby, this passion, all the time. New people are coming in. New people are getting into cinema, exploring things that are off the beaten path. They're not just watching Fast and the Furious movies and Avengers movies they're watching. They're like, wait a minute, who, Vincent Price? Let me check this out. I got to check this out, Doc. Um, and they're like, whoa, this is great. So not everything, it's new. We're keeping, these, these companies are keeping things in print so that we all have an opportunity to play and enjoy and to buy and to collect and to you know preserve these things in our own collections. 
So, uh, these have been released before. You guys are probably going to want to know if you already have the previous Vincent Price collections, these, these movies on disc already. Like, is there a point to double dip? It's up to you. So I'm going to tell you what we have here. All four of these movies, let me fan them out like a deck of cards. Uh, all four of these movies do have, well, first of all, they have their own dedicated disc with their own dedicated cover art. So that's very cool for people like me who like to, like, oh, I want to look at the cover for Comedy of Terror. Like, I, I don't know. That's cool. I appreciate that. But they do have, all four of these have new commentary tracks. Uh, audio commentary track by Tim Lucas. Audio commentary by Richard Harlan Smith. Audio commentary by Tom Weaver. And uh, Vincent Price biographer Lucy Chase Williams. And audio commentary by David Del Valle. That's not all. They carry over the uh, Roger... No. They, well, okay, so one of these has the uh, Roger Corman interview. It's the Raven, I believe. Let's see. Um, where's the Raven? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> they have the interview because Corman directed this. Uh, they talked to... So that's carried over. I believe that's on the Scream Factory edition. They also... Uh, carry over the Richard Matheson Storyteller featurettes. So these, all four of these movies originally debuted on DVD in 2003, I believe, from MGM. And they had a new featurette called, uh, <laughs> called Richard Matheson Storyteller. And it was like, you know, they're six to ten minutes each. And Richard Matheson wrote, the, the amazing Richard Matheson, the writer who is behind so much of the stuff that I really love, um, Last Man on Earth is an adaptation of I Am Legend. Not the, so the Will Smith movie is an a adaptation as well. So is the Omega Man. Uh, but it's all based on a, it's kind of a novella. So I think it's about 100, 100 pages, 150 pages. Richard Matheson. He wrote these things. And uh, they were, in 2003, they had these documentaries with Richard Matheson talking about um, what he wanted out of each movie, what his experience was like for each one of these movies. All four of those are carried over. The Corman interview, the new commentaries are here, plus uh, two of these have new trailers. Well, they're not new. They have trailers from hell. Uh, trailers from hell with Mick Garris for The Raven. Trailers from hell is Joe Dante's, uh, like, he gets his famous friends to talk about movie like they'll be like i want to talk mick garris is like i saw the raven when i was a kid i loved it i'm going to talk to you about it while we watch the trailer so they're like three minutes long so we have that for the raven and we have um oh hey you guys this one has a second audio commentary i'm sorry i missed this by actor david frankham uh and then um where's the other one i'm looking okay this one the Last Man on Earth has the trailers from hell with Joe Dante, the man who invented trailers from hell. So it does have new stuff. If you, it's up to you if you're interested in, you know, repurchasing this. If you already have them, if you don't already have them, this is for you. These are for you. These are about fifteen bucks on the Kino Lorber, fifteen to twenty bucks on the Kino Lorber Studio Classics website, and uh, that's, I mean, that's a no-brainer for me. Like that's 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 uh, an easy click in my opinion. So, also from Kino Lorber is Viva. Now, this is amazing. I do know this movie. I've watched this movie. I have to, I'll, I'll be short with this. But uh, this is from Anna Biller, who is a remarkable talent. Have you guys seen The Love Witch? Um, this is a movie from 2007 that uh, it's, it's like an homage to, I mean, the cover says it all. It's an homage to um, Schlock. It, it takes place in 1972. It's a 2007 movie. It takes place in 1972. And it is like a, a, a loving, ironic, satirical tribute to the erotic movies of that time period. The like, I want... It's about the sexual revolution. But it's done so like... It's, it's an homage. Like it's not camp. And it is camp. But it's not like... It's not a takedown. It's not a parody. It's not meant to be like laughed at uproariously. It's it's clever. It's real. It's only you can only do something like this if you really love what you're doing. And Anna Biller clearly is uh, wildly passionate about that sort of a thing. So I don't know if you like Al Adamson movies, if you like the like the stewardess movies from the early '70s and things like that, drive-in movies. It's not an adult film. It is a movie with erotic elements in it and comedy elements in it. It's got like five musical numbers. It's got an animation scene that she animated, from my understanding. Um, it's pretty amazing. So this is coming out from Kino Lorber. 
uh, for the US market, for the North American market. I'm so excited. As soon as I found out about this, I was like, I have to discuss this on Serial at Midnight because I know a lot of you guys are into exactly the same sort of thing that I'm into. So um, well worth checking out. I've got a couple of releases from um, from uh, our friends at um, JR Bookwalter's Tempe Digital. These are, let's see, we have the, the, the Bone Jack and Teen Apes Dirty Dozen. So this is a... Uh, there are 13 of these movies. This is the uh, the Chris Seaver. It's the Dirty Dozen. So back in the day, I'm not sure what the years on these things are. It's too, okay, here we go. It uh, starts in 2000 and runs up through 2009. Um, the Filthy McNasty movies, the Mulva, the Mulva movies, um, Carnage the Destroyer. So let me, first of all, this is... Uh, this is the it's it's like a collection you guys have seen what we've covered with um the shot on video six pack things like that this is uh, a collection with copious extras they've taken them from the original these are like vhs movies right these are how do they describe them on the back of the box here because uh shot uh made in these movies made an indelible mark on shot on video cinema with a series of raunchy deliriously over the top camcorder features distributed by splatter rampage that says it very well so um, these movies are for the, you know, the shot. A lot of you guys are big shot on video fans and you're big horror fans and you like that, like from the community by the community feeling. So Chris Siever directed these and he has signed this box set. This is a limited signed edition. I'll show you guys a quick peek inside the package. Uh, is this, so discs one and two. These are, I know you guys are going to ask, these are, uh, burned on demand. These are not factory pressed, but J.R. Book Walters talked about that here with us and been like, it doesn't, your computer, your device, it doesn't know. All it knows is it's got content. Uh, there's like lots of text here and then lots of uh, special features too. I kind of want to get into that. Let's see if we can talk a little bit about um, some of the stuff that's included. We got commentaries. Let's see. We have the restored feature. We have. Uh, Audio commentary with the director. We have behind the scenes features. A 31 minute behind the scenes feature. For like each one of these has tons of content. That's one of the things that I love about uh, and and one of the things that's have that's made these very easy to champion. Here's the third and fourth disc. Show you the what's under. Show you this too. Um, the value of um, the the physical media product itself, right? Is like they've put so many behind the scenes features, the commentaries and like these, these extras that they're not like surface extras. They're really, uh, in depth. And that's, I think that's really cool for, for the fans of this sort of thing, because even if you know the movies, you're getting something that's a much, much, much deeper, much ripper, richer experience. And you get, uh, it's, it's it, because you have an autograph. It's like a personal thing, right? It's like a little piece of the little piece of the, 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 filmmakers this little piece of the filmmaker with you right <laughs> we also have the weirdsies which is also from chris siever uh this is 20 i think this is 2015 yeah 2015 uh so this is also it's not part of this this is uh this is just out but both of these are just out but this is now available as well let me show you um it's the end whoop flip it around uh, check out the special features on this thing too. Here's our little box. I'll hold this up. If you want to freeze frame it, you can. But uh, again, we've got uh, commentary with the director. We've got a 2021 um, interview looking back. We've got uh, an interview with the cinematographer. 57 minutes. Hold up. 2021 shop talk with cinematographer Clint Kelly and director Chris Siever. 57 minutes. Um, and there's an 85 minutes uh, making of a crapster piece. 85 minutes. Okay, so that's... Math not so good. It's an hour and a half plus almost another hour. That's over two and a half hours just in those two features alone. So for those of you that are into this sort of thing, uh, you know who you are and you can find this at, uh, at makeflix.com. So thanks to, thanks to Makeflix for sending this over. It's cool to talk about it. Let me guys, you guys, let me know what you think about stuff like this. I kind of, I, I always like to gauge interest through feedback and I would like to hear from you about what you think about these shot on video uh, camcorder trashster pieces and things like that. Let's talk about something uh, also that is new and controversial. I don't know. I don't know if that's the right term, but Punk the Capital. This is a new, it's, it's new on disc, but this is a, um, 
a documentary about the Washington, D.C. punk rock scene from, we have years here, 1976 to 1983. Now, full disclosure, I've reviewed this at SerialAtMidnight.com. I have a full written review for this. It's a really, really fascinating documentary because when I, so I like punk music, but I'm far from like a punk expert. I mean, I can't name a lot of band members and things like that. I know some of the songs. I know some of the bands, you know, Bad Brains and I mean, I know, like, I know what some of this stuff is, but I'm not so locked into the scene that I can, when I was thinking, you know, Washington DC and punk, I was like, that seems like a really strange place for punk. But then I'm like, no. Of course, Washington, D.C. is like the heart of the beast. That's where you, all of it should flow out from there, right? All the political unrest and the societal unrest. And so Punk the Capital really taps into a lot of that. And they talk to a lot of people. Henry Rollins is up in this thing talking about, I mean, you know, all of his different bands and the permutations. Dave Grohl uh, is featured on this disc. There's a whole special feature here. 50 minutes of, bo of bonus short films built from the Punk Capital archives. Uh, Scream meets the Hangman, the Slicky Boys. Um, there's a lot of stuff here if you like punk music, and it's a really, it's cool that we're living in a time where these stories are being told, where we were able to look back and get perspective because the punk music scene. I mean, you see it being born, right? Like, what does it mean to be a punk? And you can see how it's different styles and different approaches, but it's still within the boundaries of punk. And you have everything from, like, the wild, thrashy stuff to, like, the almost corporate stuff. Like, the people would be like, you guys are corporate. Like, if you got a tie on on stage and stuff, it's, it's very, very interesting. Kind of just hones in on how it's an attitude. It's a, it's a feeling of unrest. It's a feeling of saying something and not being silenced. So much good stuff here. I really, if, if you like punk music and you're interested in the music, uh, the history of music, this is um, indispensable, right? So it's cool stuff. Uh, this was sent to me. So this is Stone Time Touch. I have not had a chance to watch this yet. Uh, this is a documentary about an Armenian Canadian journey. Uh, the filmmaker is taking a experimental, like part of it is real, part of it is fictional. To the land of Armenia to like what does Armenia mean and it gets really artsy and see some of you guys are like well that's not for me but some of you guys are like you just perked up because you're very interested in that so um it just there's a it's a Canadian Armenian filmmaker telling a story with lots of different elements fiction non-fiction uh, photographs re recollections uh, it's a documentary about Armenia real and imagined so um, I'm just shouting this out. This is very cool. If you're interested in it, you can look for it. I have a bunch of stuff from MVD Entertainment, uh, or that was sent by MVD Entertainment. So this is, I think this is, oh, this is actually from VCI, but VCI is distributed by MVD Entertainment. So let's kick it off with Chariot of the Gods. This is, I think this is a 50th anniversary edition. Uh, yeah, 50th anniversary. You guys ever listen to space, uh, to, um, Oh, it's a space ghost to coast to coast AM used to be uh, art bell. Then it switched over to George Nori late night, creepy radio, like X files come to life. It's people calling in and telling the stories like chariot of the gods is like a Bible for that show. Uh, the premise of the documentary is that aliens have been here for years and years and they, they hone in on, you know, look at the back. We've got like Nazca lines. We've got the Moai at Easter Island. Uh, by looking at, uh, you know, like hieroglyphics and cave art and every, they trace. Now we have whole shows about it, right? Ancient Aliens does not exist without Chariot of the Gods. Um, and I'm like, the, the legacy of this is huge. So it's cool that this is finally getting this nice restored Blu-ray edition. It has a bonus documentary on here called Mystery of the Goal. Uh, Mysteries of the Gods. I'm so sorry, you guys. Continue. I'm talking so fast because I, I don't want this fresh flavors to be an hour long. Uh, continues Von Daniken's travels. That's the the um, the person behind this. To every corner of the earth, bringing fresh and shocking proof that extraterrestrial life exists and has been here before. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. We'll be right back after these messages. It's my, it's my coast to coast AM. Um, I, I, th so I was going to say no other real special features, but you have a whole second documentary. That's pretty cool for a bonus special feature, right? Um, I, I think it's awesome. So 
Okay, so from MVD Entertainment, uh, and again, remember, I haven't seen most of this stuff. I just want you to know about it because a lot of this stuff is still in pre-order phase. Drunk Bus, this is a, uh, a movie that is a... It's a comedy drama about uh, people who work the late night bus shift, quote, the, the drunk bus. So there's a guy and then there's like a tattooed punk Samoan guy who form an unlikely friendship. And it's, uh, it's their experiences on the drunk bus. It has a little endorsement from Funny or Die. Uh, let's get into the international horror scene. I promised international horror. This comes out, uh, I think the, the next few of these come out on August 10th. The next three are August 10th, 2021 releases. Uh, Lust. This is a slasher movie from uh, Norway. Um, and it is about a, uh, a crime writer who is stalked and people don't believe that she's stalked and um, they think that it's like a psychological break that's all in her mind, and it is not. And that's lust. So it's a slasher movie, it's a thriller, and uh, it's from Norway. So, you know, okay, let's let's talk about, oh, I want to be brief with this, High Tension. If you guys haven't seen High Tension, you should see High Tension. It's interesting to see how horror is represented by different cultures, how different, um, different, nations have different tones and 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 i don't know it's it's like oh this feels familiar but yet very different i guess that's what i'm trying to say and i think that's fun. for horror fans that's a lot of fun this does have some special features it's got a stills compilation it's got behind the scenes feature that runs almost a half an hour special effects uh real and then the trailer so uh through the shadow who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men uh, this is, I got to keep myself straight here. This is Brazilian. This is a Brazilian horror movie in the vein of uh, The Woman in Black and the others. It is a uh, woman goes to take a nanny position and then there's something in the house, right? We've all, but it's Brazilian. So there's your twist. If you're like, well, that sounds like a lot of things I've seen already, but it's Brazilian. So, you know, it has a whole different flavor to it. Uh, so all the... Uh, the tone and the aesthetic is going to be a little askew from what we're used to. Uh, the, by the way, I should say these do have their native languages, but they also, so uh, like this is in Norwegian, but it also has an English dub. You got 5.1 surround and a 2.0 English audio. This is in Brazilian, uh, Brazilian Portuguese. Um, oh, Brazilian only with English subtitles. There you go. I guess that's an important detail for those of you guys who uh, would want to know. I am toxic. This is a Argentinian movie that is essentially Mad Max meets. You know what? I'm just gonna leave it there. Mad. Oh, look! They have a pull quote on the cover. Mad Max meets meets The Walking Dead. So, um, a man makes a man wakes in a world ravaged by biological warfare with no memory of his previous life. Taken pr prisoner by scavengers, he meets a young woman who helps him escape. They are pursued through a post-apocalyptic wasteland. It's Argentinian, so there's your twist. No other special features here, uh, just the movie. It's in Spanish, um, and it has English subtitles. So what's cool about these for the horror community is that these are movies that have been available streaming. We live in a world where... I feel like I'm mansplaining to you guys. You know, we live in a world where a lot of things go to streaming. I'll, I'll try to say this as unpretentiously as possible. Things are made to go direct to streaming. And these movies, these, they're, they're creators who make movies. They spend years of their life trying to make this movie. Uh, they put all their heart into it, all their soul into it, all their money into it. And then they do like, I made this movie. And then it goes on streaming and it gets lost. Lost in a sea of content. That's I'm crediting that one to writer, producer, director, Lisa Downs. Lost in a sea of content. That's what she said about... Uh, about the night before her Christmas in July pick uh, with Seth Rogen. The, the, these movies get lost in a sea of content. There's so much coming out, so much on streaming. It's hard to find anything. So enter the disc market. And uh, we're giving things like this a new opportunity, not only to shine, but to be discovered by a whole different audience or set of people. So it's it's cool you know you you work on something really hard you want it to have a disc you want people to discover it. it's just a shame that there are no more video stores 
really for people to find and discover these things is because that's how we did it. You know, there, I don't, I don't accept the argument that Netflix is the equivalent of walking through a video store because it's not, you can't really, you know, you can click a screen, but you can't like pick up a box. You can't see it. There was something special about walking through the video aisle. And I know a lot of you guys feel exactly the same way. So that's probably one of the reasons that some of us have, you know, bought what we've bought. We have these massive collections because we want that experience. We miss that experience. Um, yeah, that, that got, uh, that got, <laughs> that got deeper than I intended it to from dread from Epic dread. Uh, we have the maid. This is a Thai from Thailand. This is a Thai movie. Uh, and it is about uh, a maid comes to this house, takes this job, but there's a secret in the house and there have perhaps been dark things that happened, perhaps even with a, a previous maid in this house. So uh, again, world horror cinema getting a, a, a North American release. This has a uh, it has deleted scenes on it. Let's see what the language options are here. Uh, it's in English. So the audio is English. Crazy video game like melee slashing with lots of bloodshed says the movie buff Okay, so that's that uh, you guys are gonna want to know about this all everything that I've showed you here recently has been a pressed factory pressed disc um, Let's talk about we have these three come from um, This company called the uh, IT in hold on. Let me verify this I'm sorry. It was a company that I was like, oh, I'm not sure ITN, I believe, is the releasing company for these. Actually, I don't see ITN here. Graystar, Hourglass, First Focus. All right. Well, this is the Blackout Experiment, and it comes from, uh, it's an Indonesian-U.S. collaboration. So we're continuing the world, the world horror theme. Six strangers wake up in a room, and they have to kill each other to stop people that they care about from being killed outside. So you definitely see the Saw influence there. Um, but, uh, your twist is that it's an Indonesian co-production. Um, I don't believe this has any special features on it to mention. It is in, uh, English and, uh, yeah. Now this one creeps me out. This is, uh, Alfred. I believe it's also known as Alfred the doll in other markets, but they're marketing it here as Alfred. Uh, it is a, um, British film. The last two we're going to talk about. Well, here I'm just going to hold this one up too. These these are British movies. Alfred is one of those like it's a it's a person in a doll costume. That's creepy. That's that's creepy. Uh, and it's um, yeah. I mean this 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 is disturbing stuff because it's 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 taking like special effects and stuff out. It's just like oh this is like a, a this is a human being. And a doll suit. Uh, so this was a uh, yeah. I don't I don't have anything else to say about this. So I'm gonna put that down. And then Dead Again. This is another British movie that is. Uh, I I I feel like this is inspired by Simon Pegg and, and Edgar Wright. This is um, these uh, cops in the countryside who, in a rural village where crime is non-existent, a police sergeant is retiring out of boredom. On the day he is sent a young. On the day he has sent a young recruit fresh out of police academy, all hell breaks loose with both officers fighting for survival. So to me, this kind of feels like uh, Shaun of the Dead meets, um, well, the other other Edgar Wright movies. So I'll just I'll say that. So, it, but I I haven't seen it yet. So it's possible that it's amazing and it has nothing to do with either one of those things. And uh, it's always cool when new filmmakers are able to get their voices out. So, Dead Again, not to be confused with the uh, the Dead the Dead Again from um, oh guys, what's the the uh, the director the the Shakespearean? Uh, why can I not think of this actor's name? He was in the Harry Potter. He was in the second Harry Potter movie, but that's such a diminished thing to say about him. Why? Why can't, I've I've already put it on the screen and I've but why can I not remember this this guy's name? He's a director, he's a writer, uh, and he's really really good at what he does. I can't remember what it is, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out for this fresh flavors. Which ones of these are you the most excited about? Which ones have you seen? Because some of these have been on streaming for a long time and have only just arrived on the disc markets. Uh, so as always, I just love to continue the conversation in the comments below. We talk about the movies. Uh, recommend to others. Really, the community aspect is very important for videos like this. So thank you very much. If you made it to the end of this video, 
amazing. I appreciate you guys. Take care. Until next time, here's where to go and what to do.